we've just updated the post grid element in Thrive Architect to what we now call post list. And in this video, I'll show you how it works. I'm Brad from Thrive Themes, and the new post list element uses some of the technology that we've been developing for Thrive Theme Builder. So the post grid element before was still quite useful, but the new post list element is much more versatile. So the first thing I'm going to do on my side here is I'm going to load up a template. It's a particular template worth showing you, which is uh, in the bonus set, we have the homepage history personal branding template. Okay, now that this template has loaded up, I'm going to scroll down the page and you'll see that this comes with the post grid element already on the page. So what we're seeing here is a grid of three different blog articles that have been pulled in and are shown on this page. So the way this works is if you were to add new blog posts, depending on how you've set it up, what's seen on this page would change. It will change dynamically as you update your blog. One important thing to note is if you've already been using the post grid element, it will continue to work. So you can still go back through and make your edits, but at any point, if you want to, you can change it to the new post list element which is much more versatile. So this is our post grid before. And you'll see if we go under edit grid options, we can change a little bit about the layout and exactly what posts are pulled in under the query. But to show you what the new element will do, I'm going to start just by deleting this and then go into the element side panel here. And we're going to look for this one right at the top here. It says post list, drag and drop that on the page. The first thing that you'll see is We've got six different articles that have popped up here. Now, there's a few things to note first off. So on the left hand side, you'll see there's display type and there's three different options. We've got list, if I click on this, we'll show you each blog post in a list. Then we've got grid, which puts them, as you see in the grid, we've got three by three. But if we click on masonry, then what it does is it kind of slots the articles in a little bit closer to each other. So it sort of fills in the gaps there and makes it all tessellate neatly. That's the idea. I'm just going to click on grid for now. Then continuing down, we can choose how many columns there are. So we can increase that to four or five. For now, we'll leave it just at three, but you can change that to whatever you need. We've got the horizontal space as well. That's how much space is between each uh, post list element. Just set that to there and then vertical space. We can also choose to change what content is shown. So we can put the full article. You'll see it's literally listed out the entire article there. It's probably a bit unnecessary. Or we can change that just to an excerpt or to a specific number of words. This is currently set to 12 words. We'll set that to 20 if you wanted to show more. We'll set it back to 12 for now. And we'll put this back as the regular grid. But where this really gets interesting is when we start to filter posts and edit the design. Let's start just with filtering. If I click on the filter posts option, we get this little display pop up. The first thing we see at the top is that you can choose between a custom query and related posts. Let's click onto related posts. On related posts, we have the option, as it says here, display posts related to the current page by the following criteria. You can choose categories, tags, formats, or author. So this means if you were to embed this on a blog post, it will look for, if you've got the category selected, it will pull in other posts that match the same category as the blog post that you have placed this element on. Then you'll see you have the option to arrange the results by date, title, author, comments, which is how many comments there are, or just random. You can set by descending or ascending order, and you can choose how many you want to display, and you can also choose where you want it to start from. So perhaps you want to skip the first two or three blog articles and start a little bit later in your role of different content that you've published. You can set that right here. Of course, there's also the option to exclude the current post from the list just by checking this box here. That would make sense if you're going to put this on a blog post. It wouldn't make sense to have a link to the very same blog post that people are already reading in the post list embedded at the bottom. So. You can exclude that just with one tick. Most of this should make sense, but where this really gets interesting now is if we jump into the custom query. So in custom query, we can create different rules that sort of choose how exactly the content is pulled into this element. So you'll see if I click add display rule, one of the first things I can do is I can choose which category tag authors or posts. So I'm going to choose a category 
And then I'm going to add a particular category called blogging tutorials. Great. And I only want to show three of these posts. I'm happy with those settings. So we'll click save and close. Now this is going to pull in three posts, my latest posts in this category, blogging tutorials. And we can see them right there. So I'm happy with the selection of posts. What we're going to do now is start editing them. So I'm going to click on edit design. This takes us into an editing mode, as you can see with this kind of peach color that we've got framing the content here. Now, the way this works is any changes are grouped across the entire element. So I wanna make the image smaller. You'll see all images then become smaller as well. We can also edit individual elements. So for example, I might change this text type to an H3 if that's preferable. For now, I'll leave it on H2, uh, just so it's easy to read. And we can change the color or anything we'd like to for the text. Now, the key thing to note is any changes you do to the article element will be repeated for any other instance of that article. I'll show you what I mean. If I click on any element inside this and I follow the breadcrumbs back to the article, we'll see this box here. So any change inside this box repeats for all the others as well. So perhaps just by selecting this article element, I decide I want to give it a bit of a border. So under borders and corners here, I'm gonna add just a light gray. I'll make it a little darker so you can see the difference. Click apply, one pixel, and let's round these corners to 15 pixels. So that's applied just around the edge that you can see here. So I'm gonna click done, and we'll see the final look. First thing I've noticed is that the text is sitting a little bit too close to the edge of this element. So here's a solution for that. Click on the post list. We're gonna go back into the edit design mode. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a content box to this article here. So I look for the content box element, drag and drop that just here. You'll see it's repeated in each article. So I take this post list title, I'm gonna drop it right inside and I'm going to drop this one right inside as well. And this little button here. I'm going to make this text a bit smaller. Let's set this now just to heading three. Great. If I follow the breadcrumbs back to the content box, and then we go under layout and position, I'm going to get rid of this padding at the top and the padding at the bottom. And I click done. So there you go, that's already looking a lot better. We've got a little bit of space around the text, then we have the image at the top. I can then, of course, go back in and then also edit perhaps the background of this button. So I'm gonna set that to a light blue that really jumps out. And I'm going to change the color of the text to, let's just type in white and apply. And we can click done. Already this is looking great. This is pulling in three different blog articles from my site and I've completely styled how it looks. So what happens if you delete an element that you want to put back in? Well, I'll show you. Once again, we go back to post list, edit design. Let's say this read more tag here, we delete that. How do we put that back in? The read more tag is completely gone. Well, while we're in this editing mode, as I say, it's got this kind of peach color around the edge that tells us we're editing the post list. If we go up here and we choose to add an element, we have a new section here that says article components. Look at all the elements you see here. These are all pulled from the article itself. We have author bio, author name, author image, post categories, comments counter, so on and so forth. So we want to find our read more. So I can drag that, drop it right back in, and there's our button right back there. So let's go back again and look at these options. Perhaps I want to drop in an author image. I can pop that right here. You'll see huge author image just of me. So let's make that much smaller. Let's pull this right down. And we might want to pop that just above there. You get the idea. It's very easy to add whatever element you want visible here, and it's going to automatically publish with the relevant information. So if you have a different author, then of course it's going to show their image and dynamically update. I'm gonna get rid of that one just for now. So I've just made our read more button blue again. If I go into layout and position, I can send this all the way across to the right hand side, and I'm going to click done. Now back in the regular editor, if I click on post list, I'm gonna go back to the masonry look, 
Let's say that on your website, you publish blog posts as well as podcast episodes. In your regular blog role, it's gonna show all of them together. But with this post list element, you can filter out the individual ones, as I've already shown you. So let's say that this is a podcast homepage or perhaps a specific landing page on your site just for people interested in the podcast. That's the only episodes that we want to filter. This is how easy it is to change the filter. So we click on the post list element, click on filter posts, and we see it's already part of a category. That's great, but we want to change it from blogging tutorials over to podcast. I click save and close. And now we've got podcast episodes. So we might choose that we want to change this read more to now say, listen now. If I click done, that changes across all three. So you'll see we've got episode three, episode two, and episode one. So if we publish a new post, then because this post list is only pulling in three articles, episode one is going to be removed and we'll see episodes four, three, and two. We'll show you how that looks. Inside the back end of WordPress, here's some blog articles that I've already got. So you'll see we've got some of them are categorized as podcast and other ones as blogging tutorials. This episode four here is currently a draft. So if I go on to quick edit and I can make that published and click update. This would mean that I've just added the fourth podcast episode to my website. So if I return to this article, if I click save work, and then we're going to preview this page, what we'll see when I scroll down is now we've got episode four, three, and two. This will dynamically update as we add new content to that particular category. But what if you only wanna show episodes one, two, and three in the reverse order? That's easy as well. Again, we go back to this element, filter posts. And we're going to change from descending to ascending, which means it's going to change the order. Save and close. There we go, episodes one, two, and three. So that's the new post list element inside of Thrive Architect. And as you can see, its versatility is unlike anything else out there. You can completely change the look and feel of everything within this element. And that's a glimpse into where we're going with Thrive Theme Builder. Let us know what you think about the element by leaving a comment below.